Hi there. In this video, we'll show you how we programmed a body front with a links link stitch structure, also called garter stitch. For the neckline, we used an approach that is very common for manual knitting machines, but new to the Knitter 8. Let's get started. We have opened a new design in the Knitter 8 app, and we are loading the .txt file we've created with Designer Knit 9 with the command load txt file pattern. When using this command, the canvas layer can be toggled or deleted straight away to avoid compiling errors later. Next, we'll introduce the waste and cast on section by picking the command from the list and selecting the first row. We'll click on Use Current to set the selection, and then we'll enter a second yarn in the Body Yarns box, which we'll use to create a striped pattern later. We'll also enter the transfer settings for roller, stitch size and speed in the Transfer Options box. Let's zoom in and switch to Stitch Mode for a clearer view of the next step. The default transfer arrangement is not correct for the 2x1 rib, so we'll delete one of the transfer rows and use the remaining one to paint the new one. First, using Free Edit, we clear the existing transfer symbols and then paint a sample of the right ones and tile it horizontally with the tiling command. We need to select the tile, set the selection and increase the value for the x-axis until we get to the end of the row. Now we'll use the front rear transfers command to insert the transfers that will turn the current tubular structure into a links link structure. To do that, we select the area from the last rib row to the deep decreases in the armhole and set the selection, making sure to pick the option between rows and to enter the transfer settings. The next step will be to insert two bind-offs to handle the large decreases in the armpit area. We need to check the knitting directions. On this side, the bind-off will go from left to right, so we'll insert the bind-off after the last row knitted right to left. We'll make the next knitting row shorter, deleting the stitches in the decrease area. Next, we'll open the bind-off command, select the stitches we want to close and apply the selection. Make sure to check the options for Knit First Stitch to knit a stitch before the first transfer and Move Last to ensure the final bind-off stitch is closed properly. Once that's complete, we'll move to the other side and repeat the process. But first, make sure all stitches to the end of the row are transferred to the rear. You can do this by copying and pasting some transfer symbols. Then insert a new bind off, but this time change the direction to right to left and set the side to rear. Again, we'll check the boxes for knit first stitch and move last. Before we proceed and add the front rear transfers for the upper part, we'll take a close look at the shape. We can observe that the first few rows currently decrease one stitch every row, and we'll edit this to make it two stitch decreases every two rows, because we know this is more reliable. We'll leave the other single stitch decreases as they are, one every two rows. We'll do the same on both sides and also at the neckline. we'll make sure to regularly save the progress. Next is time to add the transfers we mentioned before. We'll pick the front rear transfers command from the list, select the area where we want the transfers and set the selection, change the mode to between rows and enter the transfer settings. Now it's time to add clear rows for the decrease transfers in the armhole area. We'll need to insert two rows as they'll be used for decreases on both sides of the piece. To do this, select a stitch on the knitting row just before the decrease, right click and choose Insert Row Above. Then, in the params panel, increase the number of rows to two. Repeat this process for each decrease across your pattern. You may have noticed that we have missed a couple of them in the process. We'll get the chance to fix this later.
Once all the empty rows are in place, we can start painting the decrease transfers using Free Edit. Since the stitches are on the rear bed, we'll transfer them from rear to front using a two-point inward rack. We'll also use the Free Edit to enter the transfer settings in the Options column. Stitch size 0, roller 0, speed 150. Next, we'll copy this set of transfers and paste it onto the first row of each pair of clear rows we just inserted. We're now adding the empty rows we previously missed and pasting the two stitch decrease transfers here as well. Before we move on to the upcoming single stitch decreases, we'll create an X mirrored copy of this transfer set and paste it onto each decrease on the opposite side. Make sure to use the other row from each pair we previously inserted, not the same one we used on the left side. For the single stitch decreases, we'll create a new transfer set using a couple of rear to front transfers with a one point inward rack. We'll also delete one of the existing rear to front transfers as it's no longer needed. Then, just like before, we'll adjust the settings, copy and paste the transfer and continue the process on the right side. On the right side, after pasting the X mirrored copy, we'll reselect and copy again to make sure we paste the transfers in the correct row. Once the transfers are done, we'll do a quick check using the occupancy view to make sure no stitches are left on hold and that all decreases have been applied correctly. Next, we'll move on to the neckline area. Using the new approach we mentioned earlier, we'll shift the right side of the neckline upwards so we can start working on the left side and save the right for later. Before that, we'll insert a few empty rows at the top to give ourselves enough room to place this section. Then, using Free Edit, we'll paint a few front bed stitches at the top of both neckline sections. These will be knitted with waste yarn to keep the main knit from unravelling until we link the panel. One last step before shifting the right section is to check the knitting direction at the start of the neckline to decide where to place the central bind off. In this case, we need the bind off to go from right to left so the rear knit row works perfectly. We'll clear the stitches where the bind off will go and the knitting row will continue from right to left afterward. Now we can move forward and shift the right side section. To do that, we'll select it, starting with the rear front transfers after the rear knit row and to the top. We'll use the copy command, set the selection and choose the mode by vector and the option cut. Then, by increasing the value in the Shift Y, the selected section will move vertically. We can stop moving it when it's past the left side section. Before we insert the bind off, we'll need to split this rear knit row into two separate rows, so the left side can continue after the bind off. To do that, we'll insert an empty row below, then cut and paste the beginning of the original row into the new one. After that, we'll change the knitting direction for the left section to make sure it knits from right to left after the bind off. We're now ready to insert the bind off. Open it from the command list, then pick and set the selection. We'll change the direction so it goes from right to left. Make sure to check the options knit first stitch and move last and then switch the side. We won't adjust any other settings unless it doesn't knit correctly on the first try. Next, we'll add empty rows for the decrease transfers on the left side. This time, we only need to insert one row for each decrease instead of two, since we've only got decreases on one side of the knit. When we start painting the transfer symbols, we must be careful with the transfer direction, which will depend on where the stitches are situated before the transfer. 
When transfers follow a front knit row, they'll go from front to rear with the corresponding inward rack, and vice versa when they follow a rear knit row. Once the transfer sets are complete, we'll move on to the adjustments. In this case, we'll use the settings from one of the previous transfer rows and with the keyboard shortcuts, Ctrl plus C and Ctrl plus V, we'll copy and paste them to all the other new transfer rows along the left side. With the left side complete, we can now use an X mirrored copy to quickly finish the right side. First, we'll insert the new transfer rows to ensure the row count matches. Then, we'll select the entire area with the decreases, right-click to copy and paste it onto the right side. Once again, we'll check the occupancy view to make sure all the decreases have been successfully completed. We're now close to finalising our design, and as mentioned at the beginning, we're planning to make it striped. We'll use yarn number four, which we previously introduced in the waist section, and alternate the yarn every four knitting rows by updating the options column using free edit. We'll have to pay special attention when we get to the different bind-offs in the pattern to ensure that the yarn directions stay the same. After passing the neckline's central bind off, we can see that the yarn direction for yarn number four, the pink one, isn't correct. Since it's knitting from right to left at this point, the yarn creates a long float from the opposite side of the fabric. To fix this, we'll return to the waist yarn section and insert an additional row of yarn four. We'll do that by inserting a clear row above the existing pink row, then copying and pasting the pink yarn into it. This adjustment shifts the direction of all rows using yarn four, placing the feeder on the left side of the knit, right where the issue occurred. We'll continue with the other side, making sure the yarn arrangement matches the rest of the pattern and both sides look the same. The last step is to make sure the yarns from the left side are in the correct position to begin knitting when we start on the right side. To do this, we'll use free edit to paint a line of missed stitches after the last row of each yarn, carrying them over to the other side. We'll need to pay close attention to the carrier directions. For example, the yellow yarn is on the left side of the knit, so we'll insert one yellow row in the waist section to move the carrier from left to right. Then, at the top of the waist section, we'll paint a line of drop stitches to release them from the needles. We'll need to force the direction of all three yarns at the start of the new side so they knit from left to right. To do that, we'll enter a zero in the direction column at the point where each yarn is introduced. Once that's set, we'll also paint a line of drop stitches at the top to release the knit from the needles. To finish up, we'll check the file for errors. The needle action in unsafe bed range error means we need to center the design on the needle bed. The transfer from an empty needle error indicates that a few transfers were left behind after we added the racked decrease transfers, so we'll need to delete those. Finally, the float too long error is caused by the waist yarn feeder being positioned too far from the knit.
We'll fix that by painting Miss Stitches to bring it closer. With this last fix, our design will be error free and ready to knit. Thanks for watching. Thank <music> you.